the battle of the stable coins. You've got a variety of them that are out there, but the main premise behind them is the same, that they are supposed to remain stable. So for example, you have the USDC or USDT, and one USDC is supposed to equal $1. One USDT is supposed to equal $1. But there's concerns about the stability of these as we've seen, for example, with Terra, they had a stable coin that fell apart, that got decoupled from that of the dollar, and that collapse caused a huge issue with a lot of different things here. And so now people are raising questions even further than what they had before about whether or not Tether, for example, is safe. And what we're looking at here in this article highlight is Coinbase. They're taking a shot at Tether and they're saying, hey guys, you should come over to USDC. But this is interesting because Binance is not really showing support for USDC. So we're going to get into this more in this video. I'll have a link to the article down in the description below. I'll share my thoughts and opinions on this at the end. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive on into this. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please go do your own research, guys. Coinbase's uh, Coinbase takes a shot at Tether, encourages users to switch to USDC. Coinbase's request comes just a couple of months after Binance ceased support for USDC. United States-based cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has asked its customers to convert their Tether-issued USDT stablecoin to USD coin, a USD-pegged stablecoin issued by Circle and co-founded by Coinbase in 2018. The cryptocurrency exchange suggested that USDC is a much more secure alternative in the wake of the FTX collapse saga and has also exempted any fee on the conversion of USDT to USDC on its platform, the firm said. We believe that USD coin or USDC is a trusted and reputable stable coin, so we're making it more frictionless to switch. Starting today, we're waiving fees for global retail customers to convert USDT to USDC. Stablecoins started out as an onboarding tool for the crypto exchanges in the early days of crypto, but today they have become a key market player and liquidity source. However, there has also there has always been some form of scrutiny around their reserves backing these stablecoins. A stablecoin, by definition, must be backed by one USD or equivalent. The reserve debate uh, debate intensified in the aftermath of FTX collapse, as many firms with exposure to the tainted exchange and its sister company Alameda Research went bankrupt. There was another allegation about Binance CEO Chengpeng Zhao trading barbs with former FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried and accusing him of trying to depeg USDT. Tether published its latest quarterly attestation on November 10th, just a day before the exchange filed for bankruptcy. The report noted that 82% of Tether's reserves are held in cash, cash equivalents, and other short-term deposits as of September 30th, 2022. Coinbase also stressed that USDC is 100% back, backed by, quote, cash and short dated U.S. treasuries held in U.S. regulated financial institutions, and it is always redeemable one to one for U.S. dollars. Apart from the debate over reserve audits, there is a growing stablecoin war among crypto exchanges as well. Coinbase's request to convert USDT to USDC comes just a couple of months after Binance, another global player, cut support for USDC, leading to a drop of $3 billion in the market cap of the Coinbase co-founded stablecoin. Tether issued USDT is the largest stablecoin by market share with a market cap of $65 billion. USDC currently sits at a $42 billion market capitalization, but has rapidly eaten into USDT's market share. Binance's stablecoin BUSD currently has a market cap of $22 billion. Tether didn't respond to Cointelegraph's request for comment at press time. So one big major concern here also is the centralized entities. For example, you have the Federal Reserve. They are trying to make their own stable coin. This would be the CBDC, the central bank dollar coin. And with that being released out into the market, there is the possibility where they go in and say, hey guys, we need to enforce new regulations. The only stable coin that should be allowed is the one that we have because we're the Federal Reserve and we're the ones dealing with stable coins. So there is that possibility where they try to become an exclusive 
or it could just be that they say, hey, in these certain instances, you can only use ours, these other ones, okay, if you guys wanna do those, and it becomes a progressive change, I don't know exactly, right? You have those things that could definitely come into play here. And so again, taking a look at Tether, you have a substantial amount of concern just because of how it's being backed in itself as was being mentioned inside of this article here. 82% of Tether's reserves are held in cash, cash equivalents, and other short-term deposits. And some people may look at that and say, hmm, that's uh, got its own level of risks going on right there. And then you take a look over at Coinbase and for their USDC, that that's backed by cash and short-dated US treasuries held in US regulated financial institutions. Well, guess what? I mean, we took a look at FTX and a lot of people thought that their money was safe being stored over there. And lo and behold, what did they do? They mismanaged these things. And then you see this also in history with banks where banks have laundered money and you think like, oh, it's a bank. Like they wouldn't launder money, right? That's just criminals. And then you find out, no, they actually were doing it too. There are people behind these companies and whatever their intentions are, the people that are associating, whether or not things are being shuffled underneath the table to kind of be like, hey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I'll give you a little extra something 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 and you kind of give me a little extra something something right we don't need to tell anyone about this so yeah that's a little bit of a conspiratorial thing sure but they've been caught numerous times it's happened in history so to say that it's not ever going to happen again i think would be ignorant there's a very real risk in that taking place so who's going to come out on top on the stable coin debate uh the stage right i don't know as it is right now this seems to be working to try and even the playing field a little bit. I wish everyone could kind of come together in agreement and find something um, everyone is okay with. So with this, it's almost a jab back at Binance. It's almost like just trying to reclaim some of that market cap a little bit further. But the fact that they are offering this switch from USDT to USDC and to not have a fee, it definitely does help for those that are feeling more comfortable with USDC to make that adjustment without getting a hit at the same time. So let us know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. Again, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please go do your own research. Lastly, I'll just tell you real quick about this. I've talked about it before. Webull, there's a referral link in the description. You can trade stocks. You can trade cryptocurrencies. If you use my referral link, you could get up to 12 free stocks. And it's very simple. You just open an account. You get two free fractional shares. You deposit any amount, you receive four to 10 free fractional shares. Their value is probably gonna be around $3 or $4 per share, but it could go up to $300 or $3,000 if you're lucky. They're random. And then as you guys can see from even just this graphic image, they do have different tools on their platform to help you out with keeping track of your trades, et cetera. And uh, I've been using Webull for quite a while now. I think I've been using it for probably about two years, close, maybe almost to three years now. And yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate my Patreon supporters. Double shout out. Thank you to WeLoveSafeMan.com, Victor Vegas, Safeman Oz for being higher level patrons. Also, thank you to my YouTube members for your support. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up, like button. God bless, and we will see you in the next episode.